Just like our aquariums, I think YouTube videos, at least reef aquarium related videos, are best when they are regularly updated. It's been six months since my last update, and many changes have been made. With all tanks, we have our good and bad moments. I guess I can start with the bad. I have always had a problem with bubble algae. I think I picked it up on my very first piece of live rock. Even after scrubbing my rocks and frag plugs, the issue never went away. I want to try Vibrant, and may give it a shot when my parameters have been good for at least 6 months. As you can see on this frag, I have to clean the plug off every few weeks or so. It got so out of control, it took over this rock and I couldn't even see the rock at all, just a mound of bubble algae. So what I did was take the rock out of the water, clean the rock of all algae, and coat the rock with CA glue. Sure, it killed all the coralline and made the rock white, but no more bubble algae has grown back. Around two months ago, I purchased a new Salifert Alkalinity test kit. I made the mistake of not testing my old kit with the new kit to see if there were any discrepancies, and believe what the new kit was telling me. It seemed my ALK was at 9 dKH, which is strange because it has always been locked at 8 to 8.5 dKH, so I lowered my water change schedule and lowered my calc potency. Time went on and one of my newest frags was looking pretty upset, so I went to my aquarium journal and found out that everything was fine until using the new test kit. I had a few tests left on my old trusty test kit, tested, and found out the new kit was reading 1 dKH higher. Keeping an aquarium journal may sound overly obsessed to some, but it's what actually saved me from losing that frag, and who knows what else. And to continue on this path of bad testing equipment, I purchased a new bottle of refractometer calibration solution at the same time, and yes, from the same supplier. You can see the direction of where this headache is going. Not only was I dropping my calc solution, but I was also raising my salinity at the same time, which really threw everything off. At this point, I couldn't trust any data I was receiving, so I took a liter of my tank water, both the ALK and salinity solution to a friend's house, and tested with his kits. It turns out the new kits were way off. He let me borrow his kits until my new order came in the mail and did normal size water changes over the next few days. Problem fixed. With all of the bad, there have also been good moments I have encountered. Calc is one of the easiest methods of dosing, and that is my current dosing supplement. I reached the point of my pH spiking because of the amount of calc I was dosing, so I had to supplement the calc with something that doesn't cause a pH spike. Around 5 months ago I started using All for Reef. I have to say I don't know how this stuff works, and the chemistry doesn't make sense to me, but it works great. I supplement it with my calc and I have no more pH spikes. The tank has now reached what I like to call autopilot mode again, which saves me a lot of time and grief having to test daily. I test ALK twice a week, salinity before and after a water change, which is once a week, and NNP every other week. I hardly test for calcium and magnesium anymore, they are almost always rock solid, and here are my latest test results. The corals seem to be bouncing back from the ALK and salinity fiasco, the reactor is growing the chato nicely, and the fish seem to be enjoying not watching me remove rocks to clean bubble algae as often. As far as changes go, since removing the sand, I scrape the bottom of the tank before every water change. I do this so algae and coralline doesn't take hold and get out of hand. I like the look of a white bottom rather than coralline, and by doing this it also lowers any unnecessary calcium and alkalinity consumption. After adding the new sump, I noticed my NNP skyrocket. I knew this would happen, because by removing the old sump, I was also removing a ton of filter feeders and other organisms that were feeding on the excess nutrients. After bumping up my water change schedule, everything seemed to go back to normal within a few weeks. I added all for reef as mentioned earlier, and I really do love this stuff. I made a reactor from a 2 gallon bucket I picked up at Home Depot. I drilled 3 holes in it, plumbed it, and now it grows my Kato better than the last reactor specifically designed to grow Kato. I use three LED puck lights commonly found in commercial applications. This current setup works very well, and it just goes to show you don't need expensive equipment to produce good, if not better results. That about wraps up this second episode. 
I will make another video in another six months or so, depending if there are any drastic changes in this current setup. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. And most importantly, there are ups and downs in this hobby, but by being vigilant and noticing problems before they turn into nightmares, you too can enjoy a small piece of the ocean in your home. Happy reefing.